Hello and welcome to Literary Merit, the show where we tell you what media has value. Spoiler alert, it's all of it. Also, spoiler alert, we'll be discussing spoilers as usual, so here's your warning. I'm Ashley. And I'm Alex. And it has been forever since I talked to you, like a month. It's been so <laughs> long. I've been dying. It's like I, I go to therapy every two weeks and then we record every two weeks. So I'm like, therapy's been going great, but I need my <laughs> podcast time. Yeah. Aw. <laughs> yeah. It's been, it, and it like it feels longer, I think, than it's been. Yeah. I don't know about for you, but for me, like, so I don't know. I guess we'll do things out of order. I just got back from a vacation. Mm -hmm. um, and it was weird. Like, normally vacations feel like they go by too fast. Uh -huh. But like that week lasted forever I, like i, think I don't i think there's something going on with january because january has been so long yeah well at the same time though it's like what it's already the end of january i, I don't know if I've, I've got this weird time fluctuation thing happening <laughs> in my life right now yeah i went on a carnival cruise um last week where 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 was it where did it go from or two we sailed out of galveston texas uh -huh. um down to uh cosmal mexico mm -hmm. then um grand cayman and uh montego bay jamaica Ooh. that's fun it was an adventure <laughs> i tell you what <laughs> boy, oh did you boy. did, you, yeah, did was... you stay on the ship most of the time or did you go out and do little excursion -y thingies well, um, so we were in each of those ports for just one day. Mm -hmm. um, like we would sail there th in the night um, and then, you know, get back on the boat um, in the afternoon mm -hmm. and sail off from there. Um, so like Cosmo was great because I booked an excursion to um, the Mayan city of Tulum. Ooh. It was wonderful. That was my favorite thing I did. Um and then in uh, Grand Cayman, um, Will and I didn't book any excursions. Um, the rest of the family was doing something, but we decided to just wing it. And that was pretty nice. We just sort of walked around because the boat just pulled up to a little town. Mm -hmm. And I mean, Grand Cayman is like teeny. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very small island. So everything's kind of right yeah. there. So we just sort of walked the shops and hung out. And that was nice. Um, but Jamaica was the worst oh, no. <laughs> all, all apologies to the nation of jamaica it was not your fault uh <laughs> it uh it was first of all it was raining oh, all God. day like just pouring down it was not a good day to be in jamaica mm -hmm. um but i don't i don't want to get too into it because it's kind of a long story but basically um again will and i decided to just sort of wing it and the cruise director did an announcement in the morning suggesting we do this like hop on hop off bus mm -hmm. tour it was supposed to like take you out to four different stops and it was like shuttles that were running all day so you hop on or hop off whenever you want mm -hmm. to um and sort of do it at your own pace we went out to the first uh stop which was a little like touristy um like souvenir uh -huh. shop mall and we didn't want to stay there very long, so we decided to get on, get back on the bus to go to the next stop. And we were waiting for two hours. Waiting for the bus for two hours? For two oh hours. God. For a bus to show wow. up. They, like, we were, like, there was a bunch of people who were waiting with us, and we're like, um... Okay, at least you weren't alone. You know, we have to get back... No, no, no. <laughs> if I was no, alone, was I would have like, left us. us behind. <laughs> yeah, no. It was supposed to... A bus was supposed to be there, and they were like, um, yeah, we're really sorry. Wow. It should be along any minute. And it just didn't come and didn't come and didn't come. By the time it did show up, we all just piled in. It was actually more than a busload of people. People were all, like on laps to get onto this yeah. bus. And we were like, we have to go back to the ship. We do not have yeah. time because it was, you know, pushing three o'clock and we had to be back on the ship at 3.30. Yeah. So we were just like, take us back to the ship, I guess. No more day for us. <laughs> my entire visit to Jamaica was standing in the rain at a tourist strip oh, mall. <laughs> so that wasn't yeah. fun. Um, but the rest of the days we were just at sea and it was really nice. It was nice to just like chill yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. That's cool. What have you been up to while I'm out adventuring? Ugh, stress. <laughs> <laughs> just like no hours at work and trying to figure out more, more oh. better jobby thingies and, 
and <sighs> looking for a job is and places the worst. to places I'm to so live sorry. would be great too. Oh, <laughs> um, I feel you, it, man. It, it would I be do. nice because I have so many like creative things going that would be so nice if I could like actually make money from that. Um, yeah, because just just to <laughs> sort know. of self promote, I've been doing a lot of painting. I've been doing the podcast i've been doing my writing it's gorgeous and i also do a lot well, of volunteer. you had a gallery show right yeah, oh yeah so um yeah talk <laughs> about that <laughs> a local gallery that i do a lot of poetry events at uh in vancouver um every uh january they do an open call for submissions um and it's the the theme is always um the male form and um the gallery owner she jokes that it's for her birthday month um <laughs> and also because there, every every gallery and museum in the world is f filled with paintings of naked women and she's trying to sort of fight against that so yeah, yeah. so i tip the exactly, scales a bit exactly so i i submitted a couple works and they are still hanging there for the rest of the month that's so cool yeah i'm really sad that i missed it but i think it was like the day I left for oh, my and trip. Like, <laughs> so I the, the the day it opened, I thought it was going to be like this big reception thing. Honestly, they just opened the doors. Like I went and I hung out and there was nothing really to do. So I was like, oh, I just came. I could have come any day. <laughs> uh, it was just sort of like the day that it yeah, was. Exactly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I see. So you can still go. It's running till the 28th, I think. Okay, till yeah. So that's what day of the week is uh, that? I want to say uh, Monday. Sunday? That's Sunday. Sunday. It's Sunday. Yeah. Sunday uh, after this coming. So okay, yeah, because I'm gonna be up there actually on Saturday well, and next week. If you if you have if you have free free time, you could pop in the gallery, and then right next door is Kiggins, so you could go see a movie. Right? Yeah. So it's so it's at Angst Gallery. Yep. Mm -hmm. Cool. Cool. Yeah. Hey, there used to be like a little tea shop in there, right? There might be one just past the. Um, I think just it past closed. The theater, because I because. Oh uh, no! To pass the theater is the Rosemary Cafe. Everyone listening okay. is riveted right now as we talk about downtown <laughs> Vancouver, so, Washington. So the tea shop. If the tea shop was in between the gallery and the theater, um, mm -hmm. I think. Uh, I think the owner of the gallery bought that and now it's an adjoining uh, wine bar. Right. That's what they turned it into, a wine bar. Now I remember. Yeah, I yeah. <laughs> I, I just remember that tea place because I went there all of once. And um, it was when I was <laughs> back home visiting from school. And mm -hmm. I happened to run into my favorite teacher from high school w there with her children, oh, okay. the teacher who mm -hmm. turned out to be married to my cousin. I didn't know it at the time. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, it just sticks in my memory because that's where I saw Gretchen um, for like the first time after she stopped being my teacher. Mm -hmm. It's always weird when you like start to see teachers as real humans. Oh, oh, tell me about it because I've been substitute <laughs> substitute teaching at my old high school and okay. uh, this week I, I judged the uh, high school poetry out loud competition where they recite famous poems. I judged it and I'm like, obviously I have to work with the English teachers for that. So that's always really cool. Mm -hmm. So I totally get it. Yeah. <laughs> and and it's, it's really weird too because like it feels totally normal with your professors after you like graduate yeah, because but you feel like an adult teachers, <laughs> your high school yeah that's probably why but you're like earlier teachers it's like um you're still my teacher <laughs> i know i still have to, it's like okay she's like she's my cousin and she's not even a teacher anymore but i still have to struggle to call her by her first name <laughs> <laughs> Like, I want to go, because she, well, she went by GH as a teacher. She was like, I, I'm not a first name teacher, but you don't have to call me Mrs. It's just, you can call me GH. That's fine. It's a, it's a mouthful. Um, and so, like, I just still think of her as GH yeah. when it's like, no, she's Gretchen. Her name is Gretchen, and she's my relative now. We're family. I can call her Gretchen. <laughs> her name sounds like it would totally be an Adventure Zone character. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> she's uh she's rad she's super rad i love her a lot <laughs> <laughs> well um do you want to get down to it 
Yes. So what we're going to do today, and it's going to inevitably spin off into other wilder conversations, but a good starting place, we thought, was since it is a new year to talk about sort of... And thank, st- and thank, thank goodness it's a new year. <laughs> you know what? 2017 was supposed to be the thank goodness it's a new year. I don't trust right. new years anymore. <laughs> I don't trust well, them. I'm very suspicious of 2018. I think we I got all my are. eye on you, 2018. <laughs> I'm I'm just trying to be, uh, I'm trying to like get ahead of the darkness with some positivity. <laughs> I think. Well, we we came into 2017 with nothing but good expectations, so we'll see <laughs> right? how far that gets you. The bar is very <laughs> low. <laughs> but in order to garner some positivity and gender some good feelings, oh, yes. we want to talk about... Now, a lot of people like to do, at the beginning of the year or the end of the year, a sort of best of that year sort of a thing. Now... Neither of us are as sort of ambitious as the folks who <laughs> managed to put those kinds of lists out. Ergo, we haven't experienced nearly the breadth of media that some folks might have. So maybe this is more of a stuff that made us smile the most in 2017. You know, this well- is coming from sort of a <laughs> very limited and personal perspective on media for looking at, looking at my list a lot of it makes me smile but the, i chose some other ones because i thought they were actually challenging in a good okay. way well yeah. and i i don't mean that they're not i just mean like we haven't seen enough to, to yes. rank oh, things yes. in an objective way this is Completely. strictly coming from what we managed to experience over the year just by chance (laughs) which honestly is probably way more realistic for the general populace so we should be the most popular podcast ever because sure but but (laughs) all of this is to say disclaimer if we leave something great off the list it's not because we didn't like it it's probably because we missed it and we're very sorry for that (laughs) or or simply because it's not necessarily um something that uh sparked our interest or it didn't connect with us either because a lot of the stuff that i picked is like stuff that really connected with me um and if if you do think of something and you want to talk about it tweet us please tweet us i would love it no one tweets us nobody ever tweets us (laughs) i'm the only one that tweets i'm the only one that tweets us because i don't know the login so i just at the podcast (laughs) you just at our own podcast oh boy okay well and to be fair i have more followers than the podcast so it makes you do and and the podcast has more followers than me (laughs) and i'm totally not like bragging about my follower count although (laughs) this past week it hit it hit 400 so i'm pretty jazzed (laughs) oh boy that's like I'm not even going to say my number. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you you're, you also don't like put as much. Like, no. Yeah. I, well, like, how long I have you been hard. on Twitter? Because I've been on oh. Twitter for like three months. Oh, so. <laughs> at least three years. At le- No, like probably six years. Yeah, I've not. I, I just decided like, ugh, there's too many Twitters I actually want to follow. So I'm just going to get a Twitter for that. Um, and oh, we could have we could have had a Twitter category. I didn't even think about that. Oh man, well I've got one. So Okay, well you say yours and I'll <laughs> We want to throw that. In. You say yours and I'll find mine real quick. Okay, well actually it's funny. Sorry, I'm like chewing while I'm talking <laughs> okay. and that's very rude. <laughs> well, sorry everyone listening. I don't mean to chew in your ear. I'm just like absently picking at my snack. Um this actually it's funny that you say that because I just today was reminded of a Twitter that I had meant to follow forever ago and I just finally hit follow today because i'm a fool (laughs) and that is the twitter of mr josh groban (laughs) i saw your tweet earlier (laughs) no his twitter is golden he's so good and funny like if you don't know very much about josh groban as a person like you might think that he's he could be sort of snooty or pretentious or whatever maybe you don't even conceive of him as a real person um his twitter is gold he's so funny he's so cool he's so relatable he just the other day he tweeted are farts visible in the cold (laughs) 
And that's just the kind of stuff you can expect from Mr. Josh Groban on Twitter. Okay. So I happily hit follow on that. He's just a delight. He's a treasure. <laughs> oh. What about you? Have you have you have you found a a standout oh. Twitter you'd like to? I'm looking at my the people that I follow when I should honestly be looking at my likes, um, because mm. that's where that's where the secrets are, right? Yeah, that's that that's where the truth is told right i did just follow one uh yesterday called sequel memes and it's all star wars sequel memes uh well i would think <laughs> and it, it's it, it's pretty funny but i it's 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 not in, it wasn't in 2017 so i, I don't think i can count mm. um mm. oh man yeah i'm gonna pass yeah, it's hard <laughs> it was your idea man all right now that's fine I honestly, I just wanted to talk about Josh Groban, so it's okay. <laughs> All right, so what real category do you want to start with? Because man, like I struggled with some of these, and we'll we'll get we'll get into that. Okay, um, should we start big or small? Because there's some. Let's do a real quick, easy one. Okay. Okay. Well, I think it's quick and easy. Uh, favorite YouTube channel. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> uh, for, for the listeners, uh, we were talking about, you know, what we wanted to do for this episode and Alex, uh, told me like, Hey, let's do favorite YouTube. I'm not going to do movies with Mikey. So you can, if you want. <laughs> um, but I thought about it and I thought movies with Mikey is not a YouTube channel. It is That's a show true. That's true. on the film joy channel. And I cannot in good conscience choose that because i don't watch their other shows okay. they may be delightful but i cannot i cannot say that i watch them so i can't choose movies with mikey i can't choose got film it, joy got it got it instead i'm gonna choose the youtuber Lindsay ellis who is actually a friend of mikey's which is nice <laughs> um she's another sort of media reviewer she formerly was known as the nostalgia chick mm-hmm um if you're familiar with that whole roundup of folks um but she does really fantastic um really really funny film analyses she does a lot of animated films so you know that's how she captured my heart <laughs> um, she just recently in december i think um released a video about sort of the history of adaptations of the hunchback of notre dame oh wow and it is a gem it's very 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 good um and she just sort of she sort of makes the case about uh how the disney adaptation isn't actually that far outside of sort of the standard for adaptations of the book mm -hmm. people like to talk about how it's so unfaithful to victor hugo's work but it's like mm, look at it in the context the larger context of adaptations and you'll see that it really didn't do anything that somebody hadn't done before yeah and she's funny and great she's super <laughs> cool so Lindsay ellis thumbs up for you <laughs> what about you well i chose and i've talked about this a lot especially recently um i i was going through the list of everybody and i was like well who who do i who like really really in like influenced my world uh and and it was the the museum of modern art youtube channel um oh yeah because they they basically are responsible for getting me back into painting um and specifically they're um uh in the in the um studio series where they show you how to paint like uh certain certain artists um so yeah and and, cool. and and even if like you're you're not a painter and you don't need to learn how to paint like you can tour their new um their new showing that they're doing they'll do a little quick like tour with a with one of their people or if you watch this in the studio series the guy who teaches it he has the nicest voice <laughs> <laughs> that's what she said uh, i remember that yeah so that they they are definitely my winner for the year Nice, nice. I would also like to give an honorable mention to uh, Jenna Moresi. She's an author and she does, has a YouTube channel about like writing tips, mm -hmm. um, about like writing novels and stuff. And she's just really smart and really funny, extremely helpful to anybody who wants to write prose. Um, and 
her book, her next book, The Savior's Champion, uh, was just, uh, a release date was just announced for next April, and I'm super duper stoked. Congrats, Jenna. Thank you for everything. And Film Joy, we didn't pick you because it's the obvious choice. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Like, we're obsessed. Well, yeah. <laughs> And uh, yeah, like I'll, I'll say right now, we're we're gonna do a podcast um, category. I just didn't even like consider anything in the McElroy family of products because it wouldn't have been fair. Right, so right, I forced right. myself to like to look outside right, of yeah, there. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I think same for me. I, I, that wasn't an, wasn't an intention of mine, but that's that's sort of the way I went. Let's just let's jump into podcast next since you mentioned it. Okay, you go go ahead. Go okay, first. so um. I, again, most of these are stuff I've talked about um, just because they've been such a big deal mm-hmm. for me. Uh, for the podcast, I chose Making Gay History. Um, mm. You know, it's a uh, history of queer uh, activists mainly, but also, you know, just regular people. Um, and it's mainly stories that you've absolutely never heard before. Um, even even the, the um, figures who you've heard of you know, you hear them interviewed, you hear their voices, you hear it from their lips. It's, it's like, yeah, it's probably one of the most important things I've experienced in my life, let alone in the last year. So, um, I, I, I'm just so grateful to that whole team and to Eric Marcus, the interviewer. Um, and I actually bought the book, um, that is with the same title um, that has uh, more of the, the interviews written out. So I'm really excited to dig into that and just ball my eyes out. <laughs> yeah. It sounds I, it's, I've been meaning to check that out. I have not listened to it yet, but I've heard really, really good things about it. What I would do for anyone trying to get into it rather than like subscribing and digging through is just go to their website. Um, and they have like a really easy to navigate list of all the different interviewers or interviewees. Um, and just pick somebody that you might have mm-hmm. heard of before um, and and just sort of like take a listen, you know, hear what hear what they have to say. If you don't, for some reason, don't have any idea who they are, um, uh, I would say Sylvia Rivera is a good one to listen to first um, or one of my favorites, actually. I think it was in the second season is. Um, oh, well, I'm blanking now. <laughs> uh, oh, oh no. Morris Foote is his name and uh he was the okay. he was like a, a a small town guy like and and i don't know it, you you never hear about the small town people so it was really um mm, eye opening and beautiful yeah. for me well cool cool uh so for mine i tried to think sort of about podcasts i mean cuz you know with podcasts they run for years so it's you can't necessarily pick one that like happened uh the right. last year but like i tried to think of like what i discovered last yeah. year mm-hmm. what i enjoyed most last year and um you know i i came up with a couple that i really really loved that i discovered more recently like um my favorite murder mm-hmm. and lore and myths and legends podcast um but the one that i actually ended up settling on is one that was a short series that ran only in 2017 so Hey, that works out really well. Uh, Heaven's Gate. Oh podcast yeah, yeah. They, the, so... the, the, my, my favorite murder murder uh, girls just talked about them on the new episode. Yeah, it is incredible. Extremely thoughtful. Extremely moving. Fascinating story. Um, and you get to hear it told from the point of view of people who were in the cult. Oh wow. People who are in the cult. There are still living members of the cult. Uh, so you do know, they interview them? Yeah, they have interviews from peop- the living, oh, wow. the, the remaining members of the cult, from the family members of cult members who committed suicide. Like, it's, it's really, really fascinating. And they tell the story of the cult from its inception. Wow. And it's just the most crazy story. Um, really, really moving. I And it's only like 10 episodes long. Um, absolutely check it out. Highlight my highlight podcast of 2017 for sure i'll have to because now that i know like the basics from my favorite murder i mm. feel like it, it's probably easier for me to get get into it mm-hmm. I, I i'm just I, my 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 um 
worry for myself is like could i handle it <laughs> yeah well and the 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 host glenn washington he's he's a really wonderful host he's very thoughtful and empathetic and he actually comes at it from the point of view of having grown up in a doomsday cult himself um so <laughs> well, i mean you know, takes takes somebody to <laughs> yeah i mean he can it, really you know? get in there and understand the psychology and um, he does a really, really good job with the material. And it's, yeah, I mean, it's just so interesting. And I, like, I don't want to talk about sort of where it goes too much because I think that it's more moving to sort of experience it. But, like, the conclusion that he arrives at um, by the end is really interesting. Um, definitely recommend checking that one out. Cool. Well, since we're on the subjects of podcasts, and you did tweet about it earlier, um, the episode two of uh adventure zone of, amnesty adventure zone. yeah um i actually am not quite into it and i don't know if it's oh no um, i don't think it has to do with the subject because i am obsessed with cryptids um okay. i think it's just been every time i've tried to listen to it i've been like busy doing other things and i'm not i just like uh, can't focus um but you what what were you what did you mention about was it the characters that you liked a lot Oh, I, I mean, I'm, I'm just really loving the whole thing. And, and I'm, I'm really loving seeing Griffin sort of at the top of his form, you know, with everything that he learned from Balance coming mm -hmm. at a brand new story and starting it out the way he wants to and being really in control of, like, the storytelling. Mm -hmm. I think he's just doing a spectacular job and the, the three boys are just cracking me up. I love the characters. And I, I just... Did you listen to the second episode? Yeah, I just finished it. <laughs> That ending got me so good. The, the ending, the ending is where I'm hooked now. Um, that was so good. Well, like, okay, like, so Griffin I, is too good. One of the things that I, I think I didn't like about it is like the characters are all separated right now, so we're not getting any of that. Uh -huh. You know, the bouncing off of each other. Yeah. Which is like trademark. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then also, I don't know. Right, currently, it's a little more um like generic fantasy realistic fantasy than it is cryptid based so i'm really excited to see how he like makes well it now we've own. got all the monsters just showed up just every monster so i know but it's like every monster and i wanted it to be like i don't know i don't know we'll see we'll see it's early days yeah, yeah sure days. i mean I, and I totally get it it's just it 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 not everything is for everyone and it, and it may not it may just not be your jam but i'm I'm just really enjoying Griffin's storytelling and, um, and just, I, I don't like, I keep trying to pick which of the three I, I like best, but okay, I can't. Okay, so just, I just to refresh them. me, so we have the, uh, robotic Jesus Land was the superhero one. Well, yeah, uh, among other, yeah, that was the primary location, I guess. That but the superhero, the, the, we have the, we have the superhero yeah. storyline and that was Clint, right? Clint ran that one, yeah. Okay. And then what were the other two? I can't remember that's it that's all we've done so far really it was it was balance and then it was um god what was that what was clint's arc even called uh, oh. i don't know but the superhero one a... and no I that's it yeah it was really? that it was it just took a really long time yeah. <laughs> to oh get through goodness. clint's yeah yeah no it was it, and we've had some live shows posted from, oh uh, that's right yeah from like backtracking to the balance arc so um that may be what's throwing I you did, up, but no. i did love that winter or the whatever candle nights oh one. the candle nights episode was so funny the uh <laughs> okay sidebar the funniest thing i've ever heard in my life was <laughs> Magnus asking Taco if he wants to be Santa and Taco responding, I'm not a bear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was pretty good. I screamed. I could not. And then they just like moved on from it. And I was like, hold up, hold up. Did Taco just say what I thought he said? Because that was the best. <laughs> yeah. Um, you're right. Yeah, they they just... have only done uh, the two, but commitment was what it was commitment thank you and i did really like that one so we'll see we'll see how the other two go yeah and maybe once you know they they the boys meet up i i think that's probably coming in the next episode yeah it mm -hmm. may click for you all right how about we talk about music Ooh, okay um i i chose an album and a song 
Okay, I could not choose a song. I just <laughs> right, but I, I, yeah, I've got some albums to mention though. Um, so I chose for album. I cho- chose Lord's Melodrama. That's on my list. Too. Oh my god, it was so good. <laughs> like it's one of those albums where the yeah. first time you listen to it, you're like, okay, okay, mm-hmm. yeah, okay, that's nice. I like okay. It. And then <laughs> and then you get and then you get one song stuck in your head, and you're like, oh my god, this song. And then you realize there's like two other songs completely connected to that song, and you're like, oh my god, these three songs. <laughs> yeah, it's it's very very good. I was actually just listening to that the other day. Yeah, it's, yeah it's, no, it's oh, it's so good, and like. It, it, it's so, so amazing. I mean, she's so talented and so it, it's like she's it's sort of like the, you know, relatable, but in like an uncomfortable way where you're like, oh, yeah, like, I guess I am like that. I do know what you're talking about. And I kind of wish I didn't. But <laughs> here we are. <laughs> well, and there's just such a growth from the first album. It's just like, yeah, well, she's a lot older I mean, than she, she is was. A lot older, you know, but she's, she's she's grown as a person so much just inevitably yeah. between you know, being a teenager, she that album, yeah, because she, she just turned 21, right? Something like that. When that and album came out. She's just not holding back. She's like, yeah, I'm having sex. Yeah, I'm partying. Yeah, there's like yeah. breakups, you know? It's great. Yeah, it's like she's, yeah, she's 21. So it's a, it's a very 21 album. Yeah, it's great. I really enjoyed that. Do you have a, uh, yeah, a favorite have... song from that album? not yet not at this there's too point. many i think um, it's it's too that's why i chose it for album because there's no like single song yeah it's uh <laughs> sorry know, will just busted in on me <laughs> <laughs> so yeah i was like, <laughs> <He's> like <gasps> anyway <laughs> busts in making weird noises that's my fiance okay uh, but yeah, so I had that on my list. Um, I really enjoyed uh, After Laughter from Paramore. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, that's a great yeah. album. Oh, my God. It's a great album. And it, it's just so interesting. You know, I got to say, like, I just didn't, like, get into Paramore back in the day. Like, it just kind of missed me. I was, I didn't listen to music. <laughs> uh, so I didn't, I didn't really become a fan of theirs. Mm-hmm. Uh, but this album, I was like, dang, it's, I've been missing it's out. So it's so sophisticated. Really good. Like, um they're older than me i i've loved almost every album they've come out with um but this one is like i'm gonna sing this really happy sounding song and it's such a tragic song or like the opposite of that it's it's so like mind bending in that way yeah it's uh it was really good um but uh, i also um mystery skulls is like my favorite artist mm-hmm. and um he just came out with a new album last year one of us which was very good i think i prefer his previous album though mm-hmm. but my number one album of 2017 was humans by gorillas oh good choice what an album <laughs> what an album what a band long awaited oh yeah much anticipated mm-hmm. and absolutely lived up to it very 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 good stuff yes really of the moment album a lot of hard hitting <laughs> <laughs> subject matter in that album yeah. mm-hmm. i re- i really like a it. lot of great just like i mean they're, they're always very like um varied yeah a lot of variety in their sound yeah a lot of variety um but this one especially so i agree i well they had so many guest artists like just every song featured somebody else which was Mm -hmm. super cool Mm -hmm. i mean especially because you know a lot of it seems to be sort of about the state of race relations in the world right now and this Mm -hmm. and and so that's not necessarily damon alburn's story to tell uh, and so yeah. it, it was a very good idea for them to have mm-hmm. some, a lot of guests on there to 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 tell that story themselves. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, very good stuff. Very, very good. And like still fun, too. No, oh, yeah. It's mm-hmm. like, you know, there's some really tough material in it, but overall just a real bop of an album so i like some that. some earworms ter- too i always get andromeda stuck in my head yeah. <laughs> it's good <laughs> stuff um let's see did do you have something for tv show well first i just want to say the the, the song just oh the one right song you that, had a song that 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 stood out um that i thought was probably the most 
important for uh, in my eyes um, was uh, "Praying" by Kesha. Oh, oh yeah, friggin' Rainbow. That that's a good. Yeah, I I love that album too, but it th- there's just a lot going on in that album. <laughs> um, she, she had a lot <laughs> stored up inside her. I she, think she she did. Um, but "Praying" is just like one of those songs where you're like, mm-hmm. "Holy, holy, holy shit!" Like, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I also love um, Spaceship. Oh, yeah. I like every song on that album, but they're all just so, such different moods. Yeah, it's it's a real, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, TV show. Okay. Um, so, uh, this was a close one for me. Yeah. Um, and I didn't go back and actually check to see when it premiered, but I, I put The Magicians. Um, <laughs> because <laughs> I, I'm I pretty know? sure... It's, I'm pretty sure season two was January of, of 2017 and season uh, three just premiered. So I'm just like all about it. Plus I watched it so many times. Like <laughs> I've made everybody I know watch it and I watched it with them. Oh, yeah. it's just so like everything that Harry Potter gave me at the time. This is now giving me as mm-hmm. a grown up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Harry, I mean, I, yeah, that's the interesting thing about Harry Potter. Like I, I mean, as, as fond as, as my feelings about Harry Potter are, like, I do feel like I largely outgrew it. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. And nothing against it, because, like, it was written for people younger than I am now. Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and so I, I just don't get everything out of it that I want to get from things now. Um. So, yeah, yeah. I, I definitely see the magicians sort of stepping in there. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, for me, um, and it was something that actually uh, came out, premiered in, in 2017, was The Marvelous Mrs. Meisel. Oh. oh my god, I just watched that! Good! <laughs> oh, it's so great, isn't it? Isn't she just the most darling person? It's like, like, gets no credit for how hard she fucking works. She deserves everything in the world. Midge, you deserve everything. Oh, it's so good. It's so charming. It's so heartbreaking. Like, it's it's very, very... Well, and it was created by the guy who um, made Gilmore Girls, and I just feel like he outdid himself with this. Yeah. Like, I, mm-hmm. I, I long-time fan of Gilmore Girls going back to it. There are definitely things that sort of rub me the wrong way, choices that they made that I disagree with but marvelous mrs meisel is pitch perfect it's wonderful i think the only problem i had with it was for the first couple episodes i was like i just want to see her perform (laughs) yeah just can she do another show please (laughs) right i didn't care about all the other characters for for quite a while but then you definitely like grow to love even like the worst of them well i just love lenny like Lenny Bruce, I was so happy when he showed up. I was like, oh, "It's Lenny Bruce! Oh my god!" And he's so good. And uh, yeah, I, I I I loved it. I did. I love. Thank you, oh Amazon. god, I'm blinking on her um, on her her real name, but the the manager. Yes. Yeah, I'm I, blinking as well. I've loved her ever since she was on Mad TV. Oh my god. Yeah. Queen she's hilarious so good and this is a really good role for her i think yeah i really enjoyed her character and i yeah Mm -hmm. yep 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 um now i want to save the category of movies for last because i feel like that's That's the toughest one it's the hardest one and i feel like it's the one we have the most to say about and i I want to talk about several things so um the last category we have to talk about is books right uh yes okay now i have to i have to tell you something about myself (laughs) i don't read new books ever (laughs) i think most people don't no like i love reading and i'm like in the middle of like seven books right now but i just don't really read new books now the only book that came out in 2017 that i read is your book. <laughs> so I suppose by sort of virtue of, but no, I, I, I'm not, I'm so biased. So, um, but I did, however, I will just, I will just say another book that I read recently that I super duper duper loved. So I just want to like pick it anyway. And uh-huh. I figure since I don't read new books anyway, it's 
new enough. Um, I just read uh, The Hangman's Daughter, and I need to look up um, the author. Now, I don't know if I can pronounce the author's name because he's very German. Um, <laughs> uh, Oliver, oh no, P- Poached? Po- poached? I don't know. I can't. I can't pronounce it. Um, it's a, an incredible historical thriller uh it's it's about it's basically it's like a murder mystery thriller but it's set in um bavaria in the 1600s in the mid 1600s and the three protagonists um the town executioner his adult daughter and her sort of boyfriend the physician's son are trying to solve this um rash of murders of orphans in town meanwhile the midwife is a is suspected of witchcraft and killing the children that way they know she didn't do it they know she's not a witch but they have to catch the murderer before she's executed for witchcraft Uh uh-huh and it's very 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 good it's actually a german book it's originally written in german Mm -hmm. um translated and it's just gripping. It's a very, very good. Awesome. Well, I, I picked two. I picked a fiction and a poetry. Um, for poetry, and I think I've probably I've done a shout out uh, already, but uh, Portrait of the Alcoholic by Kava Akbar. Um, it's just a little chapbook, much, much the same length as my book. Um, mm. But it's just like, I've never had a writer who is so different from me and writing about stuff that I've never really felt or had experienced before. Never have I just connected with their work so strongly, even though I don't necessarily know or have felt what they talk, they're talking about. So I don't, I th- I must just speak to the, his, his strength as a writer that um, somebody so different from him could just like wholly understand at least for a brief moment, like what he's, he's trying to get across. And it was just, it's such a beautiful and, um, truthful, uh, book of poems. And, uh, and he, he recently released, uh, the full length, uh, that has a lot of, um, the same poems that I'm still chewing through. (laughs) Um, it's, it's like four, (laughs) four or five times as many poems. So it takes a while. Um, but yeah, that's my, my poetry favorite. And I, I like, you know, suggest that to anybody and everybody because it's just so good. Um, and for Mm -hmm. fiction, I, I, I'm pretty sure I read it this year. (laughs) I put it on Goodreads this year, so I must've read it this year. (laughs) Um, um, was Sorcerer of the Wild Deeps by Kai Ashante Wilson. Um, and I, I probably talked about it back when we started the podcast. Uh, and it's just like this really dense novella um, about this sorcerer who's traveling with these soldiers. And they're trying to get to this um, this this city, but they have to go through, you know, personal issues and... Um, uh, political issues and uh, and magical issues um, all in this world <laughs> this this huge world that he creates um, but there's so little time to spend there because it's a no- it's basically a novella or just or even a short novel and it's just like it's so dense and there's so many words I had to learn and then it, it was <laughs> it was just like so challenging in the best way challenging both um, in the subject matter because it's about um people of color in a a fantasy world that still doesn't treat people of color well um oh yeah and also just challenging in just the technical language used um (laughs) so i you know i I would definitely had to reread a lot of it but it was just so just like jaw-dropping how little i knew about the world (laughs) as, as a writer so yeah, that one's my big one. Cool. Yeah, we're big fantasy nerds. <laughs> <laughs> and I think he, he in, in 2017 he released the um pseudo sequel to it called uh, A Taste of Honey. And I liked that one too, but it wasn't as uh 
it was it was more of a romance than a like a hard hitting sci fi that had a slight of a romance. Also, it's queer, so queer fantasy nerds buy it, Woo. buy it and read it. Um, Man, it's got everything. Oh right, it's got every. <laughs> it's so good. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> what more could you ask for? Exactly. Oh, more books. That's all you can ask for. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, Ashley, have you heard about Geico? Uh, Geico. What's... I don't... Sorry. I don't know what that is. So, it's that insurance agency, and they only insure against Godzilla attacks. Oh, well, oh, you know what? I... That's actually funny you say that, because I uh, just had a Godzilla attack. What? <laughs> yeah, it was <laughs> awful. <laughs> It was really bad. Is everybody okay? Uh, no, I actually really could have used some Godzilla insurance. So it's really <laughs> too bad that you're telling me about Geico now. Uh, it's a little late. Well, I think maybe you have heard of them. It's just their commercials are really confusing because they all have all these like weird characters like cavemen and insurance agents. But it's like, why don't they have Godzilla in the commercials is what I'm wondering. Yeah, I w like, how do you know what they're advertising if they don't, like, tell you that? You let an angel in. So while we were on break, I sort of had this random idea for a game uh, because all the podcasts, they all have sponsors and they all get to do fun ad reads. And I was just wondering, like, what if we did, like, either an ad read where it's, like, making fun of the product or just totally just doing it for fun and having it be completely non-serious? Um, so I was like, why don't we just... So, basically, <laughs> we're just practicing for the day. Exactly. <laughs> when we have that's real exactly, sponsors. That's we're exactly just, what it is. We're playing pretend making, sponsors. Like, making fun of ourselves and also just having fun. Okay, so it's pretend sponsors. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's, and we can, that's what uh, we've got. If, we, if we like it, we can keep doing it. If we don't, we don't have to. Uh, yeah, that sort of thing. If it's totally <laughs> stupid. If we're not funny enough. If it doesn't make sense to anybody. But I mean, I, it's fun I was laughing for us. pretty hard. <laughs> yeah, we, we enjoyed it. it was, now the trouble it was is like, trying to keep a straight face. Oh, that and like trying not to feel uncomfortable i felt so uncomfortable i was like every time i said something i was like i am such a bad actor <laughs> oh no no you're great you're great buddy we got this we got this <laughs> it's just you and the microphone all right <laughs> okay Whew. okay Next, is it time for the hard it's one time for the big one. Oh my goodness <laughs> the big one so many good movies it was came out such... last year uh, and it like and so many good superhero movies too oh right like i was, was as i was going through like the movies i enjoyed the most i was like half of these are superhero movies and it was spread out through the whole year it was like nothing really yes not a lot during the middle of the or well i guess spider-man was kind of in the no, middle because the some i mean like summer is when like a lot of good usually you know in the beginning of the year there's like the the lull you know the after but the holiday beginning of it sort of lull was where some of the strongest stuff was wasn't logan at the beginning of the year Logan did come out at the beginning of I the year. I can't believe yes, that was it did. Like, like that was. I thought. I feel like that was years ago. <laughs> I know, right? I, well, and, and I think that they they released it early in the year, sort of um, in, in the same way that uh, Deadpool. Deadpool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Deadpool was released. It, it was um. It, it it was a riskier film, yeah, and so they didn't want to bank on it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yep, yep. Uh, so that's why it was released then. But so many good. I mean, Moana came out. Um, I, uh, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say. So like Logan Lucky. Did you see Logan? I Lucky? didn't, but I heard good things. Oh my god! If you like Adam Driver, you must see this movie. <laughs> There's a, I'm, I'm, oh, I just okay. So this is not on my list, but I just finally watched uh, Get Out. Which kind of? I have the I have the Blu-ray and I have not watched it. It took yet. the world by storm last year. Like everybody, oh, I loved know it. it did. And I like, finally honestly, caught like, up. I know I need to watch it. 
I want to watch it. I know I need to watch it. I'm kind of scared to watch it. Okay, it's it. not it's not super scary. Um, but but I well, would still I'm, not. I'm, and that's not what I mean. I'm not oh, scared yeah. of it. You're just worried about having to be, live in a world post I'm just, get like, out. <laughs> yeah, like that's difficult. I mean, it sounds very sort of troubling and challenging. Like I can watch horror movies. Those don't scare me. This movie scares um, me. <laughs> I will say it's it has a lot. There's some lighthearted moments. There's a character that's very lighthearted and and like just really fun. Um, yeah. Well, I mean, Jordan Peele is a very funny yeah. man, so I'm um, not surprised. But I would still watch it with somebody just so you can, like, because I watched it alone, and I and I made it through, but, it, like, you need somebody to, like, look at when you're uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I mean, like, good, good, good year for superhero movies. We had Spider-Man Homecoming. Which was... We had Logan. Spider-Man, that was probably my favorite of the Spider-Man yeah. movies. Just such. Oh yeah, absolutely. So Easy. cute. He's so Easy. cute. So good. So he's, so he's adorable. I love him to death. <laughs> I actually just rewatched it on the on the ship. They showed it um, oh, nice. out on the pool deck. It was really cool. Um, Wonder Woman. Oh Wonder my! Like Woman. that is totally a runner up for me. Like I didn't put it here because yeah. I felt personally there were too many things that that took away from it, like my i don't know it, it, it's such a, an important it, movie it was, it's a flawed movie yeah. it, it's important and wonderful and flawed the flaws are the dc universe and the current head of the dc film universe not yeah. the movie itself or the director of the movie <laughs> yeah like they're forgivable flaws but they hold it back for sure um definitely a contender for my top movie was thor ragnarok yep that, that's tied I that's tied uh for my top is it uh, the only um, reason the only reason it's not the sole winner is because the other movie had a little more emotional weight for me. Mm-hmm. Um, but Thor um, was just so, and we did a whole episode on Thor. So, <laughs> yes, we d we we like our <laughs> Thor. Um, now my new favorite Pixar movie came out last year, and that would Coco? be Coco. Coco. Did you see Coco? Mm-hmm. I I still haven't Coco. seen it, but. Oh, you didn't see I've it. Heard, oh. I've, no. Mm -mm. It's a It'll lot of be people on Netflix missed it, like next week, you know. Yeah, I'm sure I'm sure yeah, <laughs> you'll you'll get a chance to see it soon. Absolutely see it. I feel like there wasn't a lot of marketing for it, like especially for a Pixar movie, it really just missed some people and I wonder yeah. if it may be because of the subject matter. I don't know what's going on there with the marketing. Um it might be that I'm also thinking like, and this is probably not related, but it, it, it's related to Pixar. I mean, the head of Pixar just gotten to some uh, trouble because it came out that he had been uh, sexually harassing his employees. So <sighs> yeah. when was that? Sh when did that uh, come out? I, that was after the movie came out. It was after the movie came oh. out. Yeah, because um, I, I just didn't even... No November-ish. I barely saw any marketing for the film when it was coming out. Like... Yeah. They just didn't. I don't I know. I think it's why. also. I think because visually it was so close to Book of Life, I think it was probably hard to get like people past that. Like, oh, it's just another movie, you know. I uh, guess for me, but, like, that's I what turned me off. I barely saw trailers for it. I couldn't believe it. But no, it is beautiful, wonderful Pixar, top of their form. Definitely my new favorite Pixar film. the The music is beautiful. The characters are wonderful. It it it's a winner, but it is not yeah, my I've top heard movie. Nothing but good things. Yeah, <laughs> uh, an another great film that I saw right at the end of the year just came out at the end of the year was The Shape of Water. Yep, I saw it last year too. Um, mm, it wasn't I my top, it. but I I really enjoyed it, and I loved. There was some really beautiful, be beautifully written characters in it that you mm -hmm. don't usually see. Well, um, and it, it was just neighbor. such a daring film. <laughs> yeah, in a lot of ways. <laughs> it, it, very, but like, and, and but like, it's kind of crazy. I mean, it's like if anyone's it, like, of course, Guillermo del Toro would make that movie, but it's kind of crazy that he made that movie. That he got away with it. <laughs> yeah, he made that movie. Well, just some, but like it, but daring in small ways too, not just like, yeah, it's the lady exactly. who wants to have sex with a fish. It's like... That, I mean, like, within the first 10 minutes of the movie, you see female masturbation. Like, that doesn't yeah. happen in movies. 
Mm-hmm. It doesn't, mm-hmm. and it's just so frank. And and God, yeah. I mean, it just, and that's the thing that I really love about Guillermo del Toro is he makes these choices that other people wouldn't make. People would be too chicken to, make, you know, like yeah, um, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think probably my favorite del Toro movie is Crimson Peak, mm-hmm. and the sex scene in that it's really his like sex and gender stuff that's so remarkable um because the sex scene in that movie is unlike any i've ever seen because tom hiddleston gets more naked than mia vashikovska and then she ends up on top like it's like what is Mm -hmm. any of this and it's she's not (laughs) in any way like objectified in this scene like she's the powerful one in this scene she's the person who's like in charge of what's happening and it's crazy that whole movie is Mm -hmm. so yes Guillermo del Toro he's wonderful um still not my top movie I just I just really want to mention all the fantastic movies yeah well in the shape of water like is again for me it it was probably the most I don't know it it just didn't like strike me as my favorite movie but it's just so good it's just not like it was funny after seeing uh-huh. it. I like Will and I went and saw it with his mom, and like I wanted to talk about it, but I didn't even have anything to say. I was just like, <laughs> I liked it. Because it's all there. Like it, it's just, uh, there was it's just... nothing to discuss. I was just like, I liked it, and the bad guy was really scary. Like <laughs> I don't like I don't know what else to say. It was beautiful and moving and sweet yeah. and good. Like it 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 mm-hmm. wasn't like. I mean, in certain ways, I'd say it was groundbreaking, but ultimately it was just a lovely little story. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just a lovely little story Um, on just the opposite end. I loved it. (laughs) 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 Just to take things all the way over to the other side. I loved that movie. I love I'm really excited movie. to finally watch it. I need to, I need to get away to, to watch it for cheap. Sir. (laughs) Oh God. I know I'd like it, but I'm just, uh, I'll I'll get to it. I'll get to it. Ah, changed my mind. My hard set mind about Bill Skarsgård. (laughs) (laughs) Those children are remarkable. It was very scary and good. Very, very good movie. Uh, Of course, The Last Jedi. I adored. Absolutely adored. Yeah, Um, I think think, uh, Star Wars was my favorite one. I think that was my top. Really, one. that's your that's your number one pick. That that tied with Thor. Um, um, I do it's have up a, there for me. It's up I, there. I do have a runner up, but I technically saw it this year, um, even though it came out last year. So I'll, I'll bring up that. Yeah, it's, in it's, a bit. it came out last year. That's all right. Um, but Star Wars is just like it was just so. It was exactly what I wanted and needed from Star Wars. It it's Min- amazing. Minus like, the minus the queer love story. <laughs> Yeah, that that bit is still sadly missing. Uh, but other than that, but, yeah. It but really they know covered. our grievances. They know. <laughs> they, they know. They know. Yeah, it was wonderful. It was wonderful. It was okay, so. What's your runner up though? Okay, um, I just saw it on Thursday, so yesterday. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, wow. Call, call me by your name. Oh yes, I, I gotta see it. I gotta see okay, that. Okay, so I, everybody told me it's super sad, um, but that that coupled with the fact that I was kind of anxious that day, um, I was worried to death about the characters. I was like, oh god, what's gonna happen? What's gonna happen? What's gonna happen? <laughs> Who's gonna die? <laughs> uh, exactly, exactly, because all of our queer heroes die. Um, they always die. Um, don't bury a... any more gays please <laughs> it is a spoiler but it's it's nothing to do with the movie nobody dies <laughs> so so don't don't worry for their lives um and that was honestly that was what i was so scared of but it's just so like it's such a pretty movie like it's filmed the trailers are ta- beautiful it's filmed and takes place in northern italy or uh... at least takes place in northern italy i assume it's filmed there too um yeah i would think so (laughs) um and like it it touched exactly like it's the most grown-up coming-of-age movie i've ever seen um Hmm. 
I, I mean, I haven't seen Lady Bird yet, so that'll probably contend. Um, <laughs> oh, I know. I need to see Lady Bird, too. But um, it's like all the feelings that I've either had or I've like associated with growing up as being young and gay. And mm. like... And it's just, it takes its time. It's a long movie for, for the genre that it is. It's two hours, just over two hours. Um, oh. But like every, 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 um, sh- like there's some long shots and you're just like, this shot could last forever. And I'm like, will it last mm. forever? Would I mind if it lasted forever? Like, <laughs> honestly, like there's, there's just a scene where they're riding, riding these bikes down this, down this road and you see them like almost go all the way across the screen in the distance and you're like holy crap that's just a wonderful shot um mm. and then that coupled with this like beautiful love story and like sure there's some like the main character is 17 um so there there's a little bit of like that kind of ickiness but it's it was a different time yeah. it was in the 80s and it's also a foreign country and like you know <laughs> 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 you just have to roll with it <laughs> yeah, I mean, especially and it's based on a book so it's you know that that was more of a problem that my my friend that i saw it with had um but it's just like i i left the movie and i couldn't stop thinking about it i didn't have a lot to say about it but i couldn't stop thinking about it it was just like that's how that's how I felt about the shape of water. <laughs> it, was, it was just like, and I, I was almost dreaming about the movie. It was so beautiful and, oh wow, and like heartbreaking, but in the like, oh my god, I know your feet. I know exactly how you're feeling, but you're gonna survive, and and that is such a rare thing to see in a movie, like that that you you know this person is just destroyed, but you know they're gonna be so okay one day. Yeah, oh, and that was how, that was exactly how being I was. young and queer. <laughs> exactly, and exactly, and like, oh, and there's it's such a small part of the movie, but like visually, you see him grow from being this closeted kid to like being himself, and it's it's so small and just tied in at the end, and you're like, that is so beautiful, so beautiful, mm-hmm. and that's how you know he's gonna be okay because like he's finding himself rather than somebody else. That's nice. Yeah. That's nice. Yeah. And, and, and it, it like, I, in, until the song Tanya Harding came out, I did not understand, uh, I don't know how to pronounce his name because I don't, I, but Sufjan Stevens? Oh, Sufjan. Sufjan. Sufjan Stevens. I didn't get him until, uh, Tanya Harding, the song came out. And now there, he has two or three songs in Call Me By Your Name and they're just really good. Yeah, I like Sufjan Stevens a oh, lot. Oh my goodness. I, it's the type of movie I was like, I don't want, I don't know if I would never want to see that movie again or if I want to watch that movie a million times. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. It's weird when you see a movie where you're like, I don't know if I can deal with this. It's wonderful and beautiful. And I don't know when I'll be ready to see it again. <laughs> I think I'd, if I, I think I'd really want to see it like, like show it to people. Mm. Um, yeah. Yeah. I know what you because mean. Because tackling that by yourself. <laughs> mm-hmm. and that's why i saw it with my friend uh it was the same friend i saw moonlight with last year um oh yes and i was so glad to be there with her for moonlight especially because we watched it on election night <laughs> <sighs> <sighs> um, anyway um, it's a so, hell of a thing to do <laughs> so so maybe even though i i didn't count it for myself because i watched it this year and because it didn't get a wide release until this year um but i honestly mm. um even though it wasn't like I wasn't bawling during the movie. It was just so uh well done. Um mm-hmm. that I, it's probably my favorite one so far. I still have to go see I Tanya and uh, Ladybird though. Yeah. It's, yeah. Well, my what ended up being my number one pick and I just I looked over all the movies that I saw, all the movies that came out last year and I have to go with Baby Driver. Mhm mhm. I am a huge fan of Edgar Wright. I I love the Cornetto trilogy. Baby Driver is absolutely my favorite Edgar Wright film. I just was... It just knocked my socks off. I just had so much fun watching that movie. And I I got the Blu-ray 
for Christmas and I rewatched it and I had just as much fun watching it the sec like I just the way that Edgar Wright makes a movie <laughs> is crazy to me how just meticulous he is about setting things in motion and and you don't you so rarely see that in comedy yeah mm -hmm. to, to to see somebody just so carefully piece together this like house of cards it's just like it's incredible the way that he you know he sets up dominoes and he to use other you know playing piece analogies he <laughs> it, it's just just the way that he echoes himself all the time is is and uh, i liked um ansel elgort from the fault in our stars mm -hmm, he was mm -hmm. just charming as all get out in that but i didn't i just i didn't think he had that in him what he what he accomplished in baby driver like he's just S pitch perfect in every scene like i really i don't he's so good he's so darling uh the only thing that bugs me about that movie is not even the movie's fault it's just in retrospect it's become harder to enjoy kevin spacey in movies yeah mm-hmm I, I forget, did did you uh, see Baby Driver? I still haven't seen it, but I want to say it's on some <sighs> streaming service now, so I'll... It probably is. I have the Blu-ray, um, so I haven't looked, but it's just... Oh, it's... Well, this, because, you know, the way, like, um, the the Cornetto trilogy, you know, Shaun of the Dead mm -hmm. and Hot Fuzz and, and the end of the, uh, the World's End, it, they're sort of, like, set up um, where they're sort of mirrors of themselves, how it's like the beginning sort of tells you everything yeah. about the movie that's coming and you just don't know until later, like everything was foreshadowed. Mm -hmm. um, Baby Driver uh, does that to, to a degree, certainly. Um, you know, Edgar Wright can't help but sort of foreshadow <laughs> himself just all the time. Um, but it's it's the soundtrack that's really remarkable because it's about um this young man who's a driver for the mob and he's got tinnitus and so he's always listening to music mm -hmm. to drown out the humming in mm -hmm. his head and so it's all set to music like perfectly choreographed to the music that he listens to and it's just insane the way that this like Car chases are the most boring things in the world at this point. This movie is full of the best car chases I've ever seen. I honestly seeing seeing Baby Driver was a little bit like seeing John Wick for the first time, where mm -hmm. I was just like, "How am I enjoying this right now? This is not a genre I like. What did you do? How did you do this to me?" And it's just by choreographing it really well. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. It and. Everyone in it is so good. John Hamm and Jamie Foxx are in it, and they just rule. They're so good. It's and actually, um, Paul Williams, the uh, the singer, he's got a little cameo in it, which cracked me up. Um, I guess just because it's a it's a movie about music, and you know he's a he's a legend. So for him <laughs> to to show up was a fun little, especially because I don't know necessarily how many people these days would recognize him mm -hmm. um because he was big sort of like in the in the 70s uh and, and and i just don't know that most people seeing baby driver are even gonna know who paul williams is let alone recognize him but it was a fun little mm -hmm. cameo for him i i enjoyed that a lot he plays a um a weapons dealer <laughs> 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 he's very he's very amusing so yeah i i gotta give it to edgar wright for 2017 baby driver is just a, a treat it was a treat of a film and it and it and it used one of my favorite 70s rock songs ever the song hocus pocus by the band focus <laughs> uh it is 
a wild song. <laughs> like, it is insane. It's just a crazy, crazy, crazy tune. And as soon as it started playing, it plays for this fantastic chase scene. And I was like, <gasps> like I flipped my lid <laughs> when the song started playing. And it was perfect. The scene was perfectly set to this music. It's it's just a good fun time. Good fun time. Um, so a couple things that I, I forgot to mention for TV, my runner up would be the good place. Oh, um, and yeah, we already talked about hell. it, but like I watched two episodes of it today, two new episodes and they're really good. Um, they're doing a really <laughs> good job of handling, uh, season two post season one finale, which is nice. Um, cause like, mm. I feel like in, in the wrong hands, they, uh, like it would have crashed and burned after that reveal yeah that's a hard place to sort of go from uh one other thing did you have a really quick did you have a favorite video game oh no i didn't even think about that one (laughs) um um did you i'll think while you talk um so mine was probably one that i've been playing a lot of it's probably what i played the most of um and that's called warframe and it's a free-to-play um, I love yeah, yeah no uh Will is huge into Warframe he he loves it Dylan plays it some Will wants him to play more <laughs> yeah it's just like but actually if you play I should tell Will because he would totally want to play is, with you uh, well I'm on PS4 so I don't know if he plays oh PC you can't not. play it with the PC no, people yeah he's on PC yeah but it's well, it's very fun um, and they do updates enough that like if you get tired of it you're like oh new update <laughs> <laughs> and it's free to play but you undoubtedly will s- s- spend so much money on it <laughs> yeah well and that's that's will's favorite sort of game like um you know league of yeah. legends mm-hmm. and that sort of it's ilk where it's like you can play it as much as you want and technically you don't have to ever spend money <laughs> you may want to but you don't have exactly. to <laughs> yeah uh, god you know i didn't play a lot of games last year um the only one that i can think of at the moment that came out last year that i really enjoyed um because you know i'm mostly just still playing all the yeah (laughs) old stuff that i uh that i did you know i've been playing mario kart 8 and what have you um but it came out on christmas (laughs) (laughs) and will got it for me well he will put money aside to so that i could order and download it on christmas because it was digital download Mm -hmm. only in the nintendo eShop. uh style savvy styling store now (laughs) that sounds amazing okay thank you yes it is um so the style savvy is is, it's actually a series of games for the Mm -hmm. ds and its generations um and I found I just found the um its predecessor um style savvy trendsetters uh at Best Buy on sale and I was like this seems fun and like I played a little demo I was like I like it I'm just going to get it it's on sale I found out later this is actually a very popular game with people who don't necessarily play uh-huh. that sort of game like as sort of fashion sim games go uh-huh. I guess <laughs> it's like Oh, tops that sounds um, right up my alley it's do you have a ds have a do you have a 3ds, DS. <laughs> okay so yeah you can play it if you've got a 2ds um i i started with style savvy trendsetters um but style savvy styling star came out <laughs> in the eShop. i know right well it's very japanese <laughs> the premise for i uh, presumably all of them i've only played the two of them um there's like four games i think um, is that you run a boutique oh, and awesome. you have to like buy merchandise and like people will come in and say like I want an outfit in this style will you put together an outfit for me uh, <laughs> <laughs> I feel like such a dork describing this game but it is so much fun well, honestly that's it's... what Warframe is about <laughs> like like you have to, you have to like fight fight robots and aliens but like that's only so that you can make your character look gorgeous like that's legitimately yeah, no, what it's they're about. very cool looking aliens in in warframe i really like those boys uh 
Yeah, so check out Style Savvy, I guess. <laughs> um, it's real fun. It's real cute. It's real cute. <laughs> that is the best. And it's just nice. Answer. You you need to do an article just about that because, like, <laughs> that's a hilarious and b so real. Like everybody wants to play that game. That sounds so much fun. It's. I love it because I just, I just chills me out, you know? I'm stressed out. I'm tired. This is just fun. It's just like, hey, dress me up like a Lolita girl. Hey, dress me up like a cool fashion girl. And it's like, yeah, I can do that. And I'm not worried about it. <laughs> you need... You need <laughs> video games... <laughs> video games can be so stressful sometimes. You need to and this tweet, is just the anti-stress you game. You need to tweet Polygon either a pitch for you doing an article on it or to tell them to do an article <laughs> in a video because I'm a obsessed with how you're talking about this game right now <laughs> well gosh i'm really glad that you uh you decided to drop this this category on me, <laughs> me too uh, me yeah too. it's it's <laughs> check it out man <gasps> style savvy it's a good time uh, oh. <laughs> um real quickly before we wrap up i so i uh, um <laughs> I only want to talk about it because I just watched it today. But the first episode of American Crime Story, The Assassination of Gianni Versace, just came out. Oh. And um, and I was interested because I watched the first season with uh, O.J. Simpson. Um, and that was really good. And the performance was really good. But this, this season, like, half the cast, I was like, yes. And half the cast, I was like, what? <laughs> So basically, the, huh. the the person I was the most worried about was Penelope Cruz as, uh, uh, oh God, now I'm blanking on her name, um, Donatella Versace. Okay. But she is so good. Like mm-hmm. I had no idea. I would didn't. I was not prepared. She's just like the perfect. Like the accent is perfect. The look is perfect. The like strong but so destroyed inside like oh so mm. good and like darren chris is, does a really good performance so far in it too he's the 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 murderer um yeah so i'm really excited to see how that show turns out cool yeah well yeah that that sounds like a good endorsement i i happen to quite like penelope cruz i haven't seen her in a lot but but i do like her. yeah i've never really had an opinion but this is i was i thought it was just such a weird casting for her and then i see her perform and i'm like oh i know why she was cast now <laughs> well did you see the uh the the older tom cruise movie vanilla I sky didn't, but i've seen parts of it it's it's yeah well yeah because she she was in the original spanish language version of that film um abre she, she, she's open in your the, eyes the, in spanish She's bold. Yeah, basically Tom Cruise was like, I like that movie. I'm going to make it. Hey, Penelope <laughs> Cruz, will you be in it? <laughs> and it's very good. I actually haven't seen the original. I've only seen the Tom Cruise one, and it's it's quite good. Very haunting, and she's lovely in it. That does it for today's episode. Thanks for listening. Please subscribe to us on YouTube if you absolutely love us, and like the video if you just kind of like us. You can also find us on iTunes, Google Play, and Anchor.fm. Please rate and subscribe so more nerds can find us. Check us out on Twitter at LitMeritPod for updates and news. And also, never hesitate to tweet us, at us. Uh, please, please, say anything you say want. An- say Bother anything. us. Pester. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we're, we're desperate for attention. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> And thanks to Jonathan Colton for the use of our theme song, Fraud, from his album, Artificial Heart. Until next time, remember, no no guilty guilty pleasures. pleasures.